What is up, HSM? So glad that you're joining us tonight. Right here, I've got my boy Heath with us, and we got Savannah with us. Tonight, we're gonna talk to you guys about a really cool topic. Um, it, it, we're talking about what happens after Easter. Last weekend was Easter weekend, and um, Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he went back to heaven, and his disciples, his family, his friends are there left you know, with all of these crazy emotions and stuff, wondering, okay, well, what now? And we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about what that means for us, because honestly, we're still in that season, right? That's the day that Jesus went back up, and we are still living in that time, waiting for his return. So we're gonna talk about that today. First, let's get to know these people right here. So Keith, we're gonna start with you, man. All right. Um, so, so junior at San Diego High School? Yeah, Is that junior correct? at San Diego. And, and you run track? Yep, I do track and cross country in the fall. Oh, shoot, okay, so cross country, so, um, that sounds terrible. I'm, um, I can't, uh, I'm it is, impatient. It is pretty dang painful a lot of the time. I gotcha. But it's 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 a love-hate relationship, I'll, I'll tell you that. Much. And you not only run track, you do the 200 meter, the 400 meter, the long jump, the triple jump, the four by 200 and the four by 400, is that right? How'd you know all that? Dude, I, got, I did my research. You do you research it? I did my research. I have done all of those correct? before. Yeah. Which one's your favorite? My favorite is the 4x400. That I love. Is, sounds like the worst one to me. Like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, it's it's four of your buddies. You're all suffering. You're doing like one of the hardest events. But I mean, if you guys all work together and you're all pushing towards the end, dude, there's no greater feeling than like coming in first. It's just, I love it. That's awesome. I love it. I absolutely love that. That's great. I feel like I, I would, I would get burnt out after the first straightaway. I'd probably get burnt out in the first straightaway. I'd be too impatient. I mean, you gotta be careful. Even even we can go a little too fast at the start. We're excited. Dang, man, that's awesome. All right, well, we got we got an athlete here, right? and a legit athlete. I always pretend to be athletic. He, he's like a legit athlete. And then Savannah, senior, right? Yes. At San Diego High School, same thing. And you play softball. I do. Yeah, and you're gonna go to LMU. Yes. Go Lions, you just told me that, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, so I've been playing at Santiago all four years, and then softball just a long time since I can remember. Okay. Now, fun fact about you, um, you have a tendency to be late, is what I is what I hear about <laughs> you, right? That's what, so, yeah. so some of your friends told me that they even created a penny jar. Yeah, they did. So, you, so apparently you guys started a life group, and you were always late, and the jar was like, anytime you're late, you had to put a penny in, is that right? Yeah, so, and Bible study too, with life group with Destiny, and then we had our own little Bible study group. And for some reason, even if other girls were late, I was the only one that would get confronted about being late. And then it just became a saying, penny in the jar, staff, penny in the jar. And then for Christmas, one of the girls actually got me a jar with pennies in it. That's that awesome. Says, penny in the jar. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> have you ever like, have you ever missed a flight or like gotten in trouble, or, like missed out on something because you were so late? My family, we were traveling together to, I think it was Florida, and over the speakers, it's like, Hooks family, Hooks family, your flight's about to take off, and we're just running through the airport. <laughs> So it's kind of like a family thing at some point. It works. But, I mean, I guess you got to yeah, learn the trade somewhere. Places. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, you were on time today, so good job. Did you Thank run you. here or did you drive here? I can't say that for sure. Okay. <laughs> no, I definitely drove here. Gotcha. It's a little okay. too warm for that. Um, well, so you guys are high school students go to the same high school, senior and junior, so upperclassmen. Um, you're also leaders. Uh, you're consistent at HSM, and both of your leaders vouch for you. Um, so what I want to talk to you guys about today is what we just introduced, the, the idea of Jesus um, after Easter going back to heaven, but, but really more so it's in the lens of a very, very common topic that I see in high school students all the time, and honestly in adults all the time as well, and something that I struggle with even as a pastor, which is moments and times that you feel disconnected, separated from God, feel like, you know, where is he? Why am I not able to communicate with him? Stuff like that. So we're gonna talk through those things today and maybe even talk about how we can fix that problem because it is something that, that everyone struggles from time to time with and it's hard to conquer if you don't know how to conquer it. But according to scripture, there are definitely some things that we can do to overcome that. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, it's gonna be chill, we're making a conversation. I want your opinions on some stuff. It's gonna be fun. But let's, uh, let's pray in and get started. Y'all cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Lord, thank you for Heath and Savannah and just a chance to get together and, and learn about you, grow closer to you. Thank you for HSM, anyone joining us online. Um, dear God, I pray so much that we are able to uh, talk through some of our struggles and problems when it comes to being separated, feeling separated from you. Um, and I, I pray that we're able to work and, uh, and apply some things, some truths to our life that you've given us to be able to grow closer to you and, and experience you every day. We love you, God. It's in your name that we pray. 
Amen. 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 All right. So, like I said, last weekend, Easter weekend, what'd you guys do? Did y'all have like supper? We called it Easter supper. It was like the special after Sunday meal. Did y'all have Easter supper with your families after church? I guess we're actually filming this before Sunday. So do you guys know what you have planned? Um, we are doing every holiday. We do like a huge family gathering on my dad's side of the family. So we're doing That's cool. a brunch Sunday. Ooh. Usually we've always gone to my grandma's in the past, but now we're just kind of it's transitioning. And now my mom, we do it at my mom's house. So, um, I mean, and just uh, yesterday we uh, colored some eggs oh, at nice. my grandma's house, which is like a tradition. That Easter egg dye. A couple days before. So. One time we started a prank war with my dad around Easter and he got all of my underwear and dyed it in Easter egg dye and hung it on the oh, parking deck of our beach condo. Yeah. <laughs> it was brutal. So anytime I see Easter egg dye, I think of that. But anyway, um, comment what you guys had for Easter brunch or lunch or whatever. I feel like Easter is one of like the best meals to me. But but Easter we celebrate what? We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. He died on the cross on Good Friday. Painful, painful, painful day at the time. Um, but we know that Jesus did that as a permanent sacrifice for our sins. We're able to be forgiven for that, saved through him. That's how we go to heaven. And then... He, he was dead for not three full days, but really we counted as three days and on Sunday rose from the grave. And that's what we celebrate on Easter. Most powerful moments in history. Then what a lot of people don't realize is that he actually spent some time on earth after that. He didn't go straight to heaven after that. He, he was on, I think, for 40 days um, and, and um, was with his disciples and spoke to him some more and hung out with family and friends and with the, with the locals there. And then um, he, he gives us in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, what we call the Great Commission, right? Which is go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always till the end of the age. And according to Mark and Luke, that is the, kind of the last moment that Jesus had on earth. He gives the Great Commission. He's, he's teaching and, and pastoring one more time. And then he ascends into heaven with his father where he, according to scripture, will remain until the end times. We're still living in that season. Let's go back to that moment and try to put ourselves in the disciples' shoes. So you got, you got the people who lived for 33 years with Jesus, but specifically let's go for the last three years that he was alive when he was performing miracles, when he was teaching, when he was public about who he was. And these people who had, had given up everything, dedicated their lives to him, traveled with him, seen and experienced these miracles. God, had, Jesus had changed their life, had healed them, had loved them, and like literally just was an insane time being with Jesus. They experienced the, the awful moment of the death and the emotion, I can't even imagine, Mary, his mother, the emotions of seeing him, you know, dead. You got Peter denying him three times, but then even getting this, this forgiveness afterwards and just all these emotions, the pain of the crucifixion, the joy of the resurrection when he, when he comes up from the grave. And I can't even imagine what that would have been like. All these insane, insane emotions and experiences right here and then he says this in the end in the end of great commission behold i am with you always to the end of the age which i think is so cool this cool promise um but i think it's interesting that that's really the last thing that he says or one of the last things he says before he leaves them like hey behold i'll be with you to the end of the age i will always be with you but i'm leaving like i don't like i don't know how the disciples might have interpreted that but if i'm in their shoes i'll probably be like what like hold up what was the thing you just said <laughs> And I don't know what I would, I'd be confused and maybe a little scared or whatever. I, I just putting ourselves in, in their shoes, I think it would have been kind of hard to comprehend, but that's what happens. They experience all those emotions. He goes back to heaven. He gives them that promise. I will be with you to the end of the age. And now they're sitting here like, what do we do now? And, and we kind of find ourselves in a similar situation. We can't fully relate to what they went through because they knew Jesus in the flesh and they were with him, walking with him, performing these miracles. But the part that we can relate to is that almost maybe feeling of disconnection, feeling of separation, like, well, we know that Jesus is real, but we can't see him. We can't give him a hug. We can't touch his scars. We can't, you know, so there's that almost moment of, of separation, that feeling of disconnection that we maybe experience sometimes. Have you, how do you think that they felt in that moment? Like what, like what do you think that they were going through in their mind when, when they've been through all these things and this guy that they thought was dead is now alive, they love him, they're excited, and then he promised them he'll be with them forever, and then he leaves. What do you guys think they're going through at the time? Like genuinely, what would you, what would you feel? Well, what comes to mind is, I don't know if you guys have seen Lord of the Rings before. Of course, great movie. But 
I imagine it was probably what the fellowship was kind of thinking when they Gandalf was no longer with him to guide him. That was like, he always seemed to know what to do. He was helping them out, and I feel like when they lost him, it was probably a similar feeling, but I mean, of course, it was way sadder for the fellowship there, but I mean, the as he said, Jesus said, I'm going to be with you to the end of the age, so yeah. I think they were left like, man, our guide who was with us, he was just, he just knew everything, now he's gone, but I think they were left with a new confidence because of what Jesus told them right as he okay. left, I'll be so, with you. Okay, so the you think the they're, you're, they're feeling confidence to an extent? Yeah, I think I think that's okay. there's an element of confidence, but there's always like he's gone. Like they're probably like, holy crap, what this is gonna, real. This is real. Yeah. Like he he's not here anymore. And now we're kind of, yeah. now we have to take, you know, the burden of going out and making disciples. Yeah, you know, all on our own without that like guide and mentor that he was. For yeah. Him. What a reference, by the way. Lord of the Rings, right there. Great moment. Was that when he? What does he say when he falls off that bridge? <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. That was awesome. Exactly. But but no, you're right though. Greg right. Gandalf. I literally just watched that movie, by the way. So like, that's it's awesome. fresh in my mind too. Yeah, he is. He's like he's like the he, he's the OG. He's the one that has all the answers. He can do everything. He's fighting this massive fire thing in front of him, so they're safe when they're with him. Then he's gone. Yeah. And they're like, well, what now? But you're right. They kind of have to step into this responsibility. Like, okay, it's it's game time. I can't I can't rely on Gandalf anymore. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Actually, yeah. that's a really good point. Like, a little bit of discouragement, a little bit of like, well, dang, he's gone now. But also a little bit of now responsibility. It's almost like when you when you it, when you get that C on your jersey, you're finally the yeah. captain. Like, this is a lot more pressure, but also like, like let's go. Time to kind of, yeah, kind exactly, of suit up. Exactly. That's cool. What do you think? You think they're going I through? I would be a little confused. Yeah. Because he said that I'm here with you till the end. Yeah. But then I would also look back on like everything he's done for every, mm -hmm. everyone and then it gave me hope in a sense and joy because I would trust his word mm -hmm. and in some way I would know that he would really be there until the end. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Do you guys ever feel, it's like to, to this day, do you guys ever feel disconnected or separated from God oh, yeah. in any sense of yeah, the Yeah, there are periods where you can feel disconnected. Yeah, but what is that? We, like, give me an example because like I, I like, I'm a pastor, but I feel that way a lot of times. I feel yeah. like, uh, I don't know if it's, you know, sometimes I might blame it on my ADHD or something. Sometimes I might just like feel like I'm in a, in a dry season in a rut, but you guys feel the same way? Yeah, I think it happens a lot when I'm going through a hard season of life mm, yeah. and I'm wanting answers from God and not receiving them. Yeah. Like when I need them or when I feel like I need them, then Shoot. I have to remember it's not necessarily my time. And I have to really be persistent in prayer so I don't give up on that. Wow. Because that'll preach, Savannah. Come on. <laughs> even though it's a, easy, a really easy thing to do when things not going your aren't going your way to just leave it behind and try something new. Mm -hmm. I do that with other things, but I learning not to do that with God that's because good. he has shown up so many times. So that's something that I do even when yeah. I'm feeling disconnected to just stay firm in that. Yeah and talk to people that's good like talk to people i trust and i know have a relationship with the lord mm -hmm. so they can give me wisdom to like stay firm and consistent yeah. in what i'm doing that's so good yeah i feel and, and even what you mentioned about just like hard times difficult seasons trials whatever it may be that's a huge way that we feel disconnected from god because you think you think like a lot of, it, it's a wrong view to have of god but a lot of times we have the view of god of like oh when i'm close to him everything's going well yeah so when things stop going well, it's like, well, I must be far from him. Or like even you, you mentioned you don't get the answer that you want. Uh, you know, where do I go to college? Who do I date? You know, what am I supposed to do with the situation? How do I get myself out of this hole? And for some reason, you're not getting clear answers. So that's a, I feel like that's one of the most common ways to feel disconnected from God. You feel kind of the same way? You, yeah. So the times where I really feel disconnected from God, it's not a matter of like I'm taking this huge fall away from the Lord, but there are those times where it's just even the little things you're you know all i know this is probably not what god wants me to do but mm -hmm. i do it anyways or even just little things and then suddenly you know you're praying and when you usually feel that like deep oh, i'm present with god instead you you almost literally feel a little bit distant you're like why do i not feel him as much as like i usually do mm -hmm. and i mean i've learned that it's just you just always have to return to prayer mm -hmm. you can come to him with that exactly why well, hey, god why are you feeling yeah why do i feel a little bit distant today I mean, I, is this me? Like, yeah. Like, uh, convict me and let me know what's going on. 
how can I fix this? So, and you know, I, you bring up a good point. I don't know if this is how you guys are, but I find myself in that situation where, so one of the best ways that I connect to God is through worship, like worship yeah. nights. We had worship night the other night at, at HSM, yeah. but every once in a while I'll find myself in a worship night and for some reason I'm not connecting to God or like I'm in prayer and I'm not connected to God like I, like I feel like I should be or sometimes am. I don't know how, if this is how you guys are, but you feel that moment of disconnect and then I almost get frustrated and feel even more disconnected. Like oh, it's yeah. almost like you're, it's yes. like a snowball effect. It's like, okay, I feel disconnected. I get frustrated. I feel more disconnected. I get more frustrated. It's yeah. just like kind of piling up mm -hmm. on you, whether it's in a moment that you think you should be connected to him and feeling his presence, or maybe it's a, a trial that you can't get out of. Maybe, uh, maybe it's, it's shame. Shame's a, shame was a big one for me. Still is still shame still lies to you all the time. And that's a lie from the enemy. But like, I'm ashamed of what I've done in the past. I'm ashamed of what I'm doing. I'm ashamed of whatever it is. And, and I feel like God doesn't love me because of it. And it's just like, there's a lot of things, right? There's a lot of ways um, that might lead to feeling disconnected from God. But here's the thing, Jesus right here, last thing he says to us, behold, I will be with you always to the end of the age. So what does Jesus mean when he says, hey, I'm never gonna leave you, and then he leaves? Like, what is he saying here? What is he saying here? In, in James, we actually see a moment where he's, um, or, I'm sorry, John, not James. In John, we actually see a moment when he's telling them that this is gonna happen. Before he ever dies, before he goes back to heaven, before he goes to the cross, he actually multiple times tells his disciples that it's gonna happen. He kind of hints at it, he gives complete foreshadowing, and every single time they're completely baffled. They're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? But in John, in chapter 14, we actually see a moment. He's explaining to his disciples that he's, he's gonna leave them, he's not gonna be with them forever, but the helper will come and be with them. And he even says, um, God will manifest himself in you. Judas, the guy who ends up betraying him, is like, what the heck are you talking about? And um, he, he's, he's, talk, he's foreshadowing this thing, but then he says this in verse 25 to 31. He says, these things I have spoken to you while I'm still here, but the helper, one, right there, he's already pointing that it's gonna happen. He's like, hey, like I'm, I'm here now and I'm telling you, but this isn't, it's not gonna be like that forever. But the helper, capital H, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all the things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. And he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you, um, I've told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. So I know I just gave you kind of a big chunk of scripture right there. But Jesus, way before the cross, way before all this stuff happens, he, he's warning them and he's telling them, he's already explaining to them what this phrase means. This phrase where he says, behold, I'll be with you at the end of the age. He's, he's explaining what he's meaning right here. So what is he saying in these couple of verses? First of all, I already said it, but he, he's warning us that it's gonna happen. He's warning us, right? He's, he says, hey, right now, I, I tell you these things while I'm still here. Um, he, he's like, just so you guys know, like, this has been great. The last three years, we've had so much fun. We've been great friends, you know. We, we've been healing the blind and the sick. We went to Disney World together. We had, you know, like, you know, staff retreats. He, he's like, this has been great, but just let you know, like, <clears throat> I'm not gonna be here in the flesh with you forever, which I think is cool, because I don't know about you guys, but I've had doubts before. Like, it, like it's, it's okay to admit that. Like I, like, I have had moments where it's like, like, is God real? Like, is Christianity a waste of time? Now, I never entertained those thoughts so much so that I let sin creep in and grab a hold of me. But the cool thing about what Jesus did right there in the warning is he actually already discredited some of those doubts way before they, the disciples ever had them. Like, Jesus dies on the cross. You know some of those guys probably had some doubts, right? This guy isn't supposed to die. Like he has all the power of God. Why did he let these Roman soldiers crucify him? They're probably having some doubts, some fears, whatever. Jesus warned them that it was gonna happen, which is cool, because that already discredits any doubts they may have. When I, when I start, you know, if I ever start doubting my faith or whatever, I can remember the warnings and the things that Jesus had taught me and it perfectly lines up with what I'm dealing with. So it's cool that Jesus gives them a warning way before it happens, right? But then he also says, that he, he says that just because he's gonna leave doesn't mean that they're gonna be alone. That's where the really cool explanation comes in, right? Got Jesus saying, I'm gonna be with you for always to the end of the age. But right here, he's saying that 
even though I'm with you now and I'm going to leave, you're not going to be alone. Because what he say, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name, he will teach you all the things. He will bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I will leave with you. My peace I give to you. So, so what he's saying, even though I'm not going to be here in person, even though you're not going to be able to touch me, even though you're not going to be able to do this to me, you're not going to be alone. Because you got the helper, the Holy Spirit. All through scripture, all through Jesus' teachings, we see the Holy Spirit be be referred to as the helper. Um, and that's what, when we talked about the presence of God, when we talked about feeling separated, but you brought up that like, in worship or in prayer, like when I know I should be in touch with God because a lot of times I'll feel that. That's what we're feeling is the Holy Spirit. Do you guys know what conviction is? We have talked a little bit about it. It's, it's being, to be convinced of the truth. Um, a lot of times when we're doing something wrong, we'll have that gut feeling like I shouldn't be doing this. That's the Holy Spirit convicting us, calling us out for sin. Right? He's the helper. He's helping us stay on path with God. He's helping us be in relationship with God. He's helping encourage and fill us. We get the fruits of the Spirit according to Scripture, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Did I leave, leave any out, McKenna? That, that was good. Sweet. Um, like the Holy Spirit helps us. It fills us. It's the presence of God. It convicts us. It graces us with His presence. And so Jesus is like, You've been so comfortable with my flesh presence, and it's great. But when I'm gone, it doesn't mean that you're alone, because you're gonna get the helper. In fact, even in certain moments in scripture, Jesus even refers to as the helper, as someone greater than him. He always refers to as the Father as greater than him. We see in scripture the Trinity is equal, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, but Jesus is always praising and declaring praise for his Father, which is cool. And we even see that he compliments the Holy Spirit in the same way, like when I'm gone, don't, don't be scared. Why? Because I'm leaving peace with you and you get the help of the Holy Spirit. When I'm gone, don't be confused. The Holy Spirit's going to give you this instruction and remind you of the things that I've taught you. So that's a cool promise. And the last thing he says, or a couple more things he says, he says, while we wait for his return, sin has overcome this world and it interferes with our relationship with God. He says that the king of the world is coming. He says, I'm not going to talk with you much because the king of the world is coming. He's actually referring to Satan right there, believe it or not. God is God over this world. He's God over angels and demons. He's God over us. However, when Satan was cast out of heaven, a lot of people don't know this, Satan actually has dominion on this world, on the physical world around us. That's why sin is so relevant around us. We see the world is deceived, sinful. And that can get in, in the way of our relationship with God. I'm not saying that if you're not in touch with God, you're a bad person. I don't know if you guys, have y'all ever had this experience where like you actually... I think you might have brought it up, but it's like you're doing something wrong and you feel disconnected from God. Have you ever had that? Yes. Like yeah. you feel like... You, Just like guilt sets in. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel really uneasy when mm -hmm. stuff like that happens. Like I truly know it's not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what you talk, talked about it already, but conviction. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, so, so shame and conviction are different. But what shame is, shame is a lie from the enemy that your sin actually permanently separate you from God, but sin gives shame a foothold. What I mean is this, the enemy, let's say that I live a perfect life. I'm not perfect, but let's say that I do live a perfect life. The enemy will still try to shame me, but that shame will have no foothold because I'll have no sin to back it up. Like I'll, I'll start feeling an attack of shame, but I'll be like, hold up, I'm not ashamed. I haven't done anything wrong. Whereas like sin comes in and sin does to an extent separate us from God, but then also Satan will take that sin and he'll say, shame, hey, hey, you did wrong and you know it. And Savannah, you can't, God doesn't love you. You can't connect with God because of what you did. Heath, Heath, man, you're, you, even though no one else knows what you did, you know what you did and you know it was wrong. God doesn't love you. Like that's what, that's what shame is. Shame is a lie. Those are both lies. But because you've sinned, you start to even believe it even more. And so you see how, how sin and how shame and how lies of the enemy and the power and control and the deception that he has over this world can actually create separation and a, this feeling of distance between us and God. Even though the Holy Spirit is within us, we see that that's actually one of the things that might cause us to believe and feel like we're distant from God, right? And then he, he, so he says that, that's what's happening. While he is up in heaven, sin is on this world thriving and we struggle with sin. And that's one of the things that actually can bring separation between us and God. But then this is the cool part in that last little part right there. He, he reminds us that God is stronger than Satan. God is bigger than sin. And he's bigger than anything and everything that we could ever experience. And nothing can prevent God from being with us. 
nothing compared. There are definitely, I mean, there are people who haven't received Jesus in our heart. We receive the Holy Spirit inside of us when we give our life to the Lord. But there's nothing that can remove that, that can prevent that. Sin can make us feel like we're distant from God. We can, we can make a choice not to give our life to Christ. But when we give our life to Christ, there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from God, which is a really cool reminder. Jesus is, so, so what is Jesus saying right here? He's, he's warning them, hey, I'm not going to be here forever in the flesh. Just because I'm gone in the flesh doesn't mean you're alone because you'll have the Holy Spirit. He says, when I'm gone and you have the Holy Spirit, sin is going to be obvious. It's going to be everywhere. And it is definitely going to cause separation between us. And it's going to make you think that you're alone. But then the final encouragement is like, hey, no matter what, you're not alone. God's bigger than sin. He's bigger than the world. He's bigger than Satan. He's bigger than demons. He's bigger than any of that. Really, really cool moment that Jesus has right there. So my question is this. And you guys actually already mentioned it earlier. You're, you're so good. I didn't even get to ask the question before you started answering it. But we're, we're in this world. Sin is everywhere. We're sinful beings, but we've been forgiven by the Lord. Holy Spirit lives inside of us. What do you guys do on a daily basis to try to connect to God? What, what do you guys do every single day to, to remove that separation? Because the Holy Spirit's inside of us. And even though we feel disconnected, even though we feel distant sometimes, we're not. So what do you guys do to kind of channel that connection, that relationship, that personal relationship with Jesus? Well, I've already mentioned it once, but it's so true. It's prayer, prayer, prayer. Mm -hmm. That is like the biggest thing for me. I mean, I mean, God says pray without ceasing. Yeah. And I think it's hard, especially for us teenagers to realize just how much we can pray about all oh, this guy's running late. I'll pray for him. Mm -hmm. He's just running late. Hey, thank you that I get to eat this. You know, I'm, I'm eating Chick-fil-A. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. thankful for that. I mean, you can go from the biggest things to the smallest things. I yeah. mean, this constant prayer, I think, is a great way. So constant prayer. So constant prayer. So you even mentioned it a couple of times. But what is what is what does that constant prayer look like? Because so when I was growing up, to me, prayer was we pray before a meal, we pray at church, we pray before we go to sleep at night, and I. Like, like, even though I was taught that that's not all prayer is, that's kind of how I prayed. What do you mean by this constant prayer thing? Well, what I think is that you, you always want to be extremely thankful and grateful for everything. So mm. that's a big thing you can do. And it's like one of the ways that God tells us to pray. It's not saying if you're in a tough situation, it's not, God, get me out of this. Yeah. You say, God, I know I'm in this, but thank you. Mm. I know I'm in this. Thanking him for the trial, the season. Thank you for this yeah. trial. Thank you for being with me. Even in yeah. like the deepest valley, you're saying, you know what, God, I just thank you that you're still with me, even in the so deepest valley. So good. That's actually a great way too. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you oh, off, yeah, but no, like no. you get me, you get me excited. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the best ways that that I remind myself that I'm not alone, even when I feel alone, is to acknowledge that I'm not alone. Yeah. Like like um, I'm, I'm thinking one of the most obvious moments that I felt like I, like God was not with me was when that I found out that I had to stay an extra semester at college. All my friends were going. I was tired of being in Tuscaloosa, even though I love Alabama. I was tired of being there. I was tired of school. I was tired of all this stuff. And I just felt alone. But I literally remember I said a prayer and it was like, God, I know that I feel alone, but I know that I'm not alone. So like, thank you for, even though, like, even though I feel like you're not hearing this, I know that you're hearing it. Even though I feel like I'm alone, I know that I'm not alone. Even though I feel like I'm lost, I know that I'm not lost because you're with me and I know that you have a plan. And it just, it's a, an encouragement to myself. Like, that's kind of a, a good example of a constant prayer and even that you can remind yourself right there. That's awesome. It's a great way of thanking them for, your, for, for the seasons you're in. That's awesome. Savannah, you, you kind of feel the same way. What do you go through to kind of connect with God? Um, sometimes I don't always know what to say in prayer, mm -hmm. in all honesty. That's normal, I yeah. overwhelmed with what I'm going through or I'm just like, God, I really don't know what to say, but I need to connect with you in some way. I turn to worship music a lot. Awesome. That's what I do because sometimes I feel like in a way I'm able to express and connect with myself and the Lord more through music than with just having a conversation with Him in a sense through prayer and prayer. So that's what I do to, in, it, in a way, it relaxes me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's just... I don't know. I just I prefer worship than prayer, but both are great. Yeah. But I feel like I make a better connection through worship music when it's speaking to me for what I'm going through. What's your favorite worship song right now? Ooh, I, I know, give thanks question. by Maverick City. Wow, Maverick City music. I give thanks. I mean, I thank God. It's called I thank, I thank God. God. Yes. Wow. That's my, my far favorite. I don't know. It's just like in the beginning, it's really upbeat, yeah. but then it like. The lyrics are so powerful. All their songs are really powerful, but the lyrics in that one just like 
Man, I'm ready to go mm -hmm. for the day. I thing. love that. Yeah. Jordan walked down to uh, walk down the aisle to your welcome in this place, but Maverick City Music. We oh. love that. We love that. This is so good. It is good. But I'm actually with you, Savannah. So so prayer I think is one of the most powerful, but for me, I don't know if it's because of my focus or what, but I actually struggle a lot of times with prayer. I still do it. I challenge myself yeah. to get better at it every day. But I actually worship is my usually my first thing. Um, I'll pray once I've put on worship. Like worship sets the mood, it reminds me like I'm in the presence of God. That's actually one of the most glorifying things to God as well. We're, we are worshipful beings. We're created to worship Him, to live for Him. Romans 11, 36, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever and ever. And worship is a great way to practically live out that verse. Romans 11, 36, like put on worship. Worship is about Him. It's praising Him. It's thanking Him. It's reminding ourselves that everything we have is from Him and for Him and through Him and to Him. Like it's, it's such a cool, and you're right. I think music, we use music, think about like just every day in our lives. We, we use music to set the mood. You're on a date, you put on, you know, your date night playlist. You, you know, you're you're driving the windows down in the middle of summer. You put on whatever that cruising playlist is. You're studying. You put on the lo-fi music, whatever. I don't know, but you're traveling. I got to travel, but like we set the mood. Worship, like whatever season you're in, situation, set the mood as a God present mood. Like you're feeling separated from God, put on some worship music. You set the mood with His presence, right? Yeah. I also Mm -hmm. So that's also why I like that because when I'm praying sometimes, I'm just like, dang God, and this, mm -hmm. but thank you for it because I have this. But with the worship music, it kind of um, makes me remember of all of the great that He has done in my life mm -hmm. and the blessings that are to come and the blessings that He has that's good. provided for me. I love it. No, that's all. Yeah, it's a reminder. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like. For me, it went like, just like the worship night, I feel like there's no quicker and like, there's no quicker way to feel the presence mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever like worship nights start or even just in the big church mm -hmm. for HSM, I mean, it's just intense and immediate. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's nothing quite like worship That's good. where you just immediately feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's That's just, so good. It's amazing stuff. So I'll actually go off of that because I'm the same way as you. Worship, I feel like is the quickest way to connect. Sometimes though, even in worship, I feel separated. Yeah. Then I'll start to pray. But even in prayer, sometimes I'll feel separated. Um, then I go to one of my favorites, which is the Word. It wasn't always my favorite. In fact, for a while it was my least favorite because I hate reading. I can't focus, but it's turned into one of my favorite things. Joshua 1.8, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but day, uh, day and night you should, or you should meditate on it day and night. I think that's Joshua 1.8. Um, and then what's, McKenna, help me out, the verse that says, all scriptures breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for correction, for training, and righteousness. What verse? Addy, let's go. <laughs> Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17. You're right, no, it is. Um, but so what that verse tells me and what Joshua 1 8 tells me is like, so I've actually memorized scripture to help me. When I, because um, you mentioned the reminder thing and you mentioned the encouragement thing and you mentioned the, you know, like the active, like you get to get active and get kind of, yeah. you know, direct and intentional with, with the prayer thing. The memorizing the word does that for me as well. Um, when I feel alone, I have memorized John 10, 27, 30. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands. That reminds me like, hey, God's got me. Like, even though I feel lost, I'm like a little sheep, like helpless being attacked by wolves. My shepherd's got me. He knows me. He seeks after me and nothing's able to take him from me. When I feel tempted, I remember 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. No temptation has seized you except what's common to man. And like, and, and, and when I think, you know, prior, like, I don't know what to, what decision to make. When I feel disconnected from God, God, I don't see a clear answer. Should I take this job? Should I not? Should I go to this college? Should I not? Should I date this girl? Should I break up with her? Should I, what should I do? What should I do? Matthew 6 through 3, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And like, it's like, oh yeah, prioritize, like, you know? And so what I like about those three things you mentioned, you mentioned prayer, you mentioned worship, you mentioned the word. You feel disconnected from God in worship, go to prayer. You feel disconnected from God in prayer, go to the Word. You feel disconnected from God to the Word, and you can use all three, you can intertwine them, and no matter what, you use them as a reminder, as an encouragement. It's so cool. Yeah. I also do um, devotion, daily devotionals mm -hmm. yeah. on the Bible app. There you go. Because when I, when I know I need something, mm -hmm. like not necessarily wanting to read the Bible, but I want to like look for something specific, whether it be about faith, yeah. or like happiness, or friendships, anything like that, I like going through the devotionals because it's directly to that. Yeah. And then it gives verses and stuff. 
Yeah, and that's one of the things about the Bible, you bring up a good point. It can be confusing, or you can not know where to start, or you can not know what this means or that means. A devotional, a Bible plan could help with that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, cause I still, even as a pastor, even though I went to school for it, like I still turn to people, hey, Pastor Chuck, what does this mean? Um, McKenna is in school for it right now, and even we'll have theological conversations, like what the heck do you think that this means? Do you think this is, you know, whatever. And so that's a great point. Um, real quick, as we're wrapping up, what advice would you give to someone? Maybe it's, you know, they're young in their faith. Um, maybe right now they're struggling connecting with God. Um, or maybe they've tried all these things and they've hit a brick wall. Do you have any advice for someone who's just struggling through that, thinking through how do I connect to God more? You've already given great advice, but if there's one little nugget thing that maybe that worked the best for you, what would that be? For me, I would have to say community. Mm. When you're going. Shoot. <laughs> it's true. It's good. Whenever I didn't, like when I, there were times where I was like, man, I really don't feel like going to HSN. My girls would be like, no, come on, you're coming. Like, even if you don't want to go, you need to go. When you get there, you'll feel so much better and happy that you did go. And just having a community for Bible study, small stuff like that, even if, again, man, I don't feel like going or I'm really struggling in this area, I feel like when people have the same mindset as you, directed towards the Lord, they are they will give you the advice that you're looking for and lead you in the right path. So good. And someone that's disconnected. God uses people in our life. Yeah. If we feel disconnected, he'll use people to pick us up, to encourage us, to remind us that we're loved. That's awesome. And to go off of that, I recently went to the men's conference and yeah. for Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. Yeah. And one of the things that stood out to me probably the most was the, they recommended the importance of a battle buddy. Ooh. I mean, this is specific. I like that. I like that. I've never heard that battle buddy. brothers in Christ. Yeah. But a battle buddy is someone who, another, you know, it could be for like sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ, just someone who you're incredibly close to who you can turn to when you run into these issues. Hey, I'm feeling pretty distant from God right now. And of course, I, 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 God can work through um, other people as well, you know, and you can find that connection with God again through them. So yeah. again, going off of that community thing, that importance of just a close bond with a fellow brother in Christ, sister in Christ, yeah. who's gonna be able to help you through whatever times, you know, trials that you're going through. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I love that. I like, it's like accountability partner, but it sounds cooler. Yeah, buddy. I like buddy. that, but it is true. It's like, okay, get someone who will challenge you when you don't want to go to church. It'll, it'll get you off your butt. I'm like, nope, you're coming with us. Someone that like, hey, um, I'm feeling discouraged. Like, what do you think about this? And they'll encourage you. They'll they'll keep you accountable. Hey, how you doing with this struggle? They'll know your sins. They'll know your temptations. You can rely on each other. That's how I got out of addiction was with people. So like, that's huge. So both of these two leaders, we've talked about the presence of God feeling separated and the nugget of advice they have get people in your corner. Use prayer, use worship, use the Bible, and get people to do those three things. Right now though, I wanna end out today. I hope you guys learned something from today. Honestly, I really love this conversation. I love talking about this stuff, so thank you guys for being here. Of course. But I think the most important thing we can do is to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, right? You guys have received Jesus into our hearts, and if anyone's watching right now and you feel separated from God and you've never given your life to Christ, I got news for you, you are separated from God because you receive the Holy Spirit and you receive his forgiveness and salvation when you invite him in. So right now, if you guys are cool with it, we're gonna say a prayer and anyone who's watching right now is gonna say it with us, inviting God into our life, asking for forgiveness. And then that phrase that Jesus spoke, the fact that he, behold, I will be with you until the end of the age, that becomes true through the Holy Spirit. So right now, if you're ready, I would love for you to say this prayer with us. Um, just, just repeat after me, say it in your own hearts and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna say it with you guys. So um, actually what I'll do, I know you guys have already said this prayer, I'm gonna say it, you guys repeat after me. So you guys will say it with Savannah and Heath, but God, I love you. God, I love you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Be with me everywhere I go. Be with me everywhere I go. Never leave me. Never leave me. Love me. Love me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I say yes to you. I say yes to you. You are my God. You are my God. It's in your name that I pray. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. And thank you for saying that prayer. Thank you for joining us today. If you said a prayer, go to crossroadschurch.family. We'd love to get you in a life group, maybe connect you with some of them. If you're a junior, you'll be in Heath's group. If you're a junior guy, senior girl, you'll be with Savannah for a little while. Guys, thank you for being with us. Cannot wait to see you next week online or in person. Next week, we're having rodeo night at HSM, so I'd love for you to join us there. Grab some boots, belt buckle. You guys going to be there? 
Yeah, I'll be yeah. there. Yeah? yeah? You gonna wear a cowboy hat? No. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, I could. I'm sure I have one somewhere. You're, you don't have to. You do you. You do you, but catch me there in, in some cowboy boots. Kind of there you go. All right. All right. Yeah, I got to dig through my closet until I find the most root and tootin' cowboy outfit. Possible. I love that root and tootin', man. That's what I'm talking about. Is that, <laughs> is that, is that Woody? I, I Woody from Buzz Lightyear? Yeah, or Toy Story? I love it. Well, guys, see you next week at HSM Rodeo Night. Savannah, Heath, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys later. Have a good day.